Hey, Pedro. Hi, guys. guys. Good. How are you? It's been a long Good. time. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, you. I just like, it was great. I got to hang out with some users and, and chat with them. I let them know that things were a little bit hectic and there was some stuff going on. So we had to push back a little bit. Um, so we got to show off some new profiles and all of that exciting stuff. Um, but I'm super honored and excited to have you here. Um, you are such a ray of light in such a amazingly terrible world sometimes. So it's so, so <laughs> fun and exciting to get to, to have you here and chat with you. Um, and thanks Thank for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm super nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I am not usually like the, I don't really like too much of the interview like scenarios just because like it just gives me like this nervous anxiety. Um, but because I know you already and met you in person, I feel more uh, comfortable and, you know, I appreciate you having me on here. Awesome. Cool. So we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about some of the amazing stuff that that you are a part of, which is uh, absolutely a game changer for a lot of people. Right. So we've we've uh, you know, we're, we're going to dive into some some deep topics. I'm going to try and go easy on you. I won't I won't you know, put you up against the wall or anything. We'll, we'll keep it simple. Um, but yeah. So first and foremost, you are a photographer. You take pictures. Yes. Yes. What do you take pictures of? So I actually do e-com. So I do e-com photography for different brands. Um, basically, you know, commercial photography for uh, shapewear and bodysuits, you know, women's um, clothing mostly. And I also am the creative director for a brand, which I currently do the advertising and I also do the photography for this brand um, in particular, uh, and also portraits. So that's basically what I specialize myself in. <laughs> which is amazing. And I know we're here to talk about other things, so we're going to get to those other things. But I think there's so much value to the like e-commerce product and portrait photography space. So. Um, you know, I did, I actually did not know that you did shapewear, which I know shapewear, which is, <laughs> you know, like, so, you know, it's a big deal. Um, so that's, that's absolutely incredible and super cool to hear. So how did you really get started in that space? Like what, if, if somebody wanted to get started in that space or they were interested in, in like products or e-commerce photography, what did you do to get, get off the ground? So basically when I lived, so I lived in New York City for uh, 17 years. And while I was living in New York City, I just love fashion photography. Like that was basically what I was aiming for. Um, and then I started to contact different brands and basically just try to get my name out there because I didn't really know exactly how I would go about it. And um, it just kind of happened. Uh, I landed this uh, brand that they needed photos of their different products out on the streets of New York and they didn't have a photographer in New York City and they were based in California. Um, so I started doing lingerie and I started doing costumes um, for uh, this brand called Leg Avenue. It's a very big uh, lingerie company, but they also do all of the costumes that people buy at the store and you know for Halloween and everything like that. So I created all of the creative direction for them in New York City. And basically, when they first hired me, they liked it, they loved it. And then they just kept hiring me from there to do different campaigns for them, because they also sell clothing for like raves and stuff like that. Um, and then basically what I, the way that I set it up is that I would find them the models, I would find the locations, and then I would find the makeup artists. And I will take care of everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then basically from there, I just kept going in the same route. Um, because it, and that at that moment in time, I wasn't actually 100% sure what I wanted to do with my photography. Um, I think I was like in the middle of like, okay, do I want to do Vogue? <laughs> or do I want to do brands? Or do, what do I want to do? Do I want to do celebrities? So I did some celebrity stuff, um, but I, I felt like, I, you know, uh, commercial photography was basically what I really wanted to do. And this is what I've been doing now for the past, oof, uh, seven years, maybe? Uh, awesome. Seven, oh, yeah, awesome. seven years. 
that's such a yeah. cool story. So you you basically you just went on the hustle and you said, hey, I, I'm interested in product <laughs> photography. I'm going to go email everyone and their mother and find out if anyone needs somebody. Just get my name out there. And then somebody needed it. And that, I mean, like, yes. really, that's how so many of us start. I didn't think it translated. Right. So for me, I was like, OK, weddings, I get it. Like you, you throw your name out there, you do your photography, yeah. whatever it is. And it's like, hey, my photographer canceled last minute. I need a human right. being to fill the role, right? Um, but in this case, you 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 had the same thing. It was, hey, we don't have anyone in New York. We need somebody to do this, and you did it. Yeah, it was like a New York state of mind, you know, like that hustle, like the hustler, like, oh, I need, you know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely. And, uh, and that's a, myself and that's a big brand. That so, so when I go to like Halloween Spirit, am I seeing Pedro's work on the wall? Um, not anymore. Before, yes. Okay. Before, yes. So <laughs> yeah. I, I've seen your work accidentally is what you're telling me. Yes, you probably have. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if I bought a Halloween Absolutely. costume in the past, I've seen your work hanging on the wall. That's really cool. I mean, that, that's like, yeah. that's something to be, that you could hang your hat on that right there. You you could retire and say, you bought a Halloween costume a few years ago. You <laughs> saw my photo, right? That's so cool. So that, like, <laughs> Actually, uh, it was so funny because I, um, for the lingerie, because they also had, you know, they actually sell the lingerie packets and everything like that. And a, a lot of my friends are women. And basically, they uh, <laughs> they would send me some photos. They're like, did you take this? I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> when they go buy like their stockings or whatever. And uh, yeah, so, or their lingerie. And I'm like, yeah, I took those pictures. It's so funny. And uh, yeah, those were good times for sure. That's that was like the awesome. beginning yeah. process. Like it's so, it's amazing because I honestly, like you kind of forget after you've done so many things afterwards and you're like, oh shit, did I, oh sorry. Um, but you know, I basically now looking back at it, I'm like, wow, like they used to send me these boxes full of women's <laughs> products and I just needed to figure out what I was gonna do with them. and. And it was only, you know, just myself just thinking about all of these things. And then I had like two people who I ended up like recruiting in the process because they were really helpful. And I, yeah, that's how I created this whole PVAS photography. So that's cool. And so but, I know I said I was going to take it easy on you, uh, <laughs> but now I'm going to ask you the hardest question that you're ever going to have to answer. Because, um, uh -oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I know this is. I have my opinions on the topic, but I want to see your opinion as somebody who is in that space, who did product photography or does product photography and e-commerce photography. Um, you know, you've clearly established yourself and, you know, uh, we have all seen your work buying Halloween costumes. I mean, that's like wild or lingerie. <laughs> um, so what do you see? the future of the product photography space looking with, with all like the mid journeys and the generative AI stuff happening. Do you feel like there's a, uh, a worry that you have as a photographer in the space? Or do you think that there's a, a, like, for me, I already have my answer, but I want to hear you, how you feel about it. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about it because it takes a whole team to create certain things um, when it comes to this type of space. Um, you definitely need a videographer, you need an assistant, you need a photographer, you need everyone. Um, I don't think, I'm not worried about AI, they're not gonna do anything. Cause you still need the human emotion, you know? You still need somebody there to guide and to make it look like it's something that I wanna buy, you know? Um, so yeah, so and I don't think AI can really process that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so my my open opinion on it is is very similar, right? I think that you know, general like if you're photographing a water bottle, yeah, you might be you might be a little yeah, bit worried about that. <laughs> that's that's one. But if there is any human element involved in any of the images, no matter how good AI is going to get with generative stuff, I think you're always going to struggle to find the ability to create a concept that's realistic and makes people want to buy stuff. I mean, you know, a lot of us now can't really tell whether it's a person or not a person at this point, like whether it's AI <laughs> or real, right? There, It's gotten really good. But with that, there the AI stuff, a lot of times it just doesn't feel like a human being. You can tell that it's it's just too good, right? And yes. I think there's something yeah. about that that you know can be said that you can definitely see 
when there's a real human being with human emotion and, and character, their soul in the eyes and that sort of stuff. Um, and I think that people will definitely not resonate with some of the advertisements that are AI generated just because of that. You can tell, especially when it's Absolutely. like clothing. You can say, hey, that's not a real per human's proportions. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, like you said, for I mean, there may be some things that maybe be taken out, but eventually you still need a human person to kind of guide the whole, you know, vision yeah. of whatever it is that you're working on, for sure. I love it. Yeah. So sorry for the hardball question right off the bat, but uh, <laughs> but now it's we're gonna okay. get on to some really we're gonna get onto some really exciting stuff. It was just it was burning in my mind. I was like, I want to hear from. You know, for me, I'm not a product photographer at all. Um, I'll take pictures of stuff that I like to take pictures of, but I've never like gone out and pursued anything in product photography. Um, and that's what what inspired me to say, hey, like, how do you how'd you get there? But also just to be like, hmm, this is very interesting. I think that you know you're the right person to ask. You've you've done it. You've been there. Yeah. Uh, that's that's. And cool. I think like if if anyone that's you know that's in here watching um and if they were to want to do some type of you know commercial photography e-com or products or anything like this um in in that realm um i would say just go for it you know manifest it if that's really what you want to do um i think it's an amazing job it is different than you know a wedding it is different than a family shoot it is different than maternity um you know, but it is valuable. And I think it's important also, you know, to understand, like, when you go to purchase a product online, especially because everything is e-com, um, you basically, uh, you know, you learn like the, the way the language, right? Like the language of what people want and where they what they're clicking. And, you know, when they go on the website and they look at products and then, uh, there's just so much to it. And also advertising. It's just great if you want to create stories, if you want to do scripts, if you want to, you know, make something come to life. But obviously you're not an actor, so you can't really be in front of the camera. But like you want to see something, right, that you're thinking about, but you want to see it on somebody else. Um, it's just uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, you yeah. know, it's you're, a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You're inspiring me to want to get out there and, and start creating narratives. I mean, because you're exactly <laughs> right. I mean, when you look at when you look at advertisements and magazines and, and everything, it's not just, hey, we took this cute photo of someone wearing an outfit. It's always exactly. very, very well thought out, right? It's it's the outfit. Yes. It's the model. It's the concept. There's yes. more than yes. just... You, don't, you aren't given just, hey, we want this model in this underwear. You're given, hey, we want this feeling from yes. this image. And your job is to try and figure out how do I pick a location, a pose, uh, all of these pieces to make this yep. feeling come through in print, um, which is which is amazing. So and, the, now and different I, lighting uh, techniques <laughs> and different light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yes. gotta light this thing to make Lots it. Lots of it. different lighting techniques. <laughs> yeah, you gotta light it to to create environment and 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 feelings and and everything. So that that's cool. I mean, that's it, it. Really is inspiring to know that that's like a. It's truly an art form. I mean, you know, we we as like me as a wedding photographer, it is an art form, sure. But it's not like, hey, I'm gonna conceptualize an entire scene in one photo, like one, it's, I'm just emoting love, right? I'm just looking like, how do they look happy and having fun? And how can I do like something cool and, and create some <laughs> mood and environment? And you're like, I have one, one page advert to get the emotion across and it has to be well thought out start to finish. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a cool aspect. I, I'm sure there's plenty of people who are uh, quite interested in, in that. So maybe we'll have to sidebar and do something later on that. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll do a, a nice product one, but the real reason that uh, I wanted to talk to you more or the, the, one of the main things we wanted to talk about is you are the person who created something called Latinos who photograph. <laughs> yes, you I am creator, the, the creator. Um, <laughs> so tell us more about Latinos who photograph and, and where the inspiration came from and, and how it all got started. Okay, so during the uh, COVID-19, actually, I'm sitting around. Well, so, you know, I was living in New York City 
and I moved back um, with my parents right after the pan well, right in the pandemic, because I wasn't a hundred percent sure like what was gonna happen, and then also, um, you know, I I just wanted to make sure that wherever I was, I was safe. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know where the world was headed. Um, and, you know, they live in Florida, so that's why I moved back to Florida. And during this time, I'm just sitting in, in my room, just talking to my friend and just kind of throwing ideas out there. And then we're just talking, talking, talking. And I'm like, you know what? There's something missing um, online, which I've never really seen, um, is Latinos who photograph. Like, I, I don't see, like, an actual platform where people are talking about Latino photographers. So then I started doing my research on Google and then I started to realize that no one had, no one was writing about Latinos who photograph. Um, so as I'm, I'm actually looking for Latino photographers on Google, but then I'm thinking to myself, Latinos who photograph, Latinos who photograph, Latinos who photograph. <laughs> and, you know, I, I was just wondering like, hmm, something here, something is missing. And if I go to search for Latinos who photograph, I would literally search for it just like that, Latinos who photograph. How would I find that? So that's where the idea came from um, with my friend. And then we both like just jump up and down. Like it was, I mean, I was, it was during the phone call, but it just felt like we we're both on the same energy spectrum. And basically this is how it all started. And then I just kept thinking to myself like, okay, how can we make this? What should we do with this? And, you know, basically wanted to spotlight photographers who are Latinos, um, you know, people who are uniting and, you know, try to educate them and motivate, motivate them to, you know, do certain things within that community. Um, and that's basically what I, that's how it all started. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like the mission statement, right? Is is uplifting, yeah. uplifting Latinos in the community and helping them yes. educate more, learn more, and, yes. and gain prowess. Yes, and so going to the educating and the spotlighting and everything. So there was an application called Clubhouse at the time, and because all of us photographers, we needed a space to talk because you know we all are. ADHD, <laughs> like we need to do something with ourselves, right? So I basically started the uh, clubhouse, um, Latinos Who Photograph. So I started a club on there and I started to make rooms. So I had some friends who kind of guided me into the application first. Um, and this was kind of like the, I was in the application before anyone, like the general public was allowed to go in unless you were getting invited by somebody, et cetera, et cetera. And basically I started to join and I started to join my friends' um, groups and I started to see how it was all being maneuvered. And so then I ended up making rooms every Tuesday and Thursday at like six o'clock. I would just put on the title Latinos Who Photograph. Latinos who photograph started to join, you know, like different Latino photographers started to join from different places, from Mexico, Panama, America, like, you know, Puerto Rico, everywhere, anywhere you can think of, they were coming in. So then from there, I met uh, one of my board members, his, uh, his name is Wilker. And basically, he would then start to join me every single week. And then we started to interview different photographers who are Latinos, who are in different um, aspects in, in you know, the photography world, where, whether it was like commercial, wedding, portrait, uh, maternity, uh, you name it. I mean, we had everyone coming in that room. Um, and then we ended up creating a club in the application and then we started doing educational um, rooms. So then we started educating people on different things. People were learning from each other and we we're just bouncing off ideas, boom, boom, boom. Um, and then we ended up becoming the second club on the application, uh, one of the top two clubs on the application for Latino photographer or for Latinos period yeah and uh then we ended up getting like up to three thousand members on the app and then the app started to die down and then you know people started to disperse yeah and was like, this still exist? <laughs> yeah it doesn't exist anymore i mean it does exist sorry it does exist but it's not like how it was once um, we had some really good, good rooms in there. I mean, I would literally start because, you know, this is during the pandemic. So like you could do whatever you want. You're on the phone, you could talk. 
we would we was we would be there for morning coffee. We would start the room in the morning. We wouldn't finish to like nine or ten o'clock at night. Sometimes to two, three o'clock in the morning. Cause we ended up even having like karaoke rooms. I mean, like, you know, this is I, I mean, we did all kinds of stuff on there. <laughs> I mean, it was educational, fun. We got united. Uh, and then, you know, that's when the, you know, in be in all of that, I started guiding people towards the Instagram, towards the Twitter, because at one point, Twitter was kind of going to go be like the next clubhouse. So then we started to all kind of jump into Twitter. And then from Twitter, then everybody went back to Instagram and then everybody went back to TikTok now. And yeah, so then now there is no more of an audio based application where people are joining, uh, not as much as it used to be when the pandemic was happening. Yeah. That's but awesome. yeah, that's that's basically Latinos with photograph. <laughs> Club born out of Clubhouse. Um, cool. So tell me, tell me about the members of Latinos who photograph. Like, um, who are they? Who who's who's running this thing? Tell me more. So our members are actually um, they're from different parts of the United States, um, and they all have unique international heritage. Whether some of us are actually from Peru, um, Venezuela. Uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Dominican, Dominican Republic, um, Mexico, um, Brazil, and also America. So um, we are all different photographers. We all have different type of um, skills. Uh, we have maternity. We have headshot. We have families. We also have um, babies and uh, dating our online dating photographer as well as as well as uh, uh, fitness and um, you know pole dancing type photography. So we have a little bit of everything. That's cool. I I didn't even know dating and pole dancing photography was a thing. I mean, I guess I assume everything has a photography genre, but that's it. Yes. That's I mean, cool. you know, so the dating is actually by Herman Marin. He is an online dating photographer, which is something that I've never heard of either. But it is very unique in itself because think about it. If you're on a dating app and you need a new photo, but you don't really know how to take your own photos, you need someone to hire to take your photos. So that's basically what he does. And he makes them look like themselves. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And I think it's, it's, it's a pretty cool concept for sure. That is a really cool concept. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. So we're, you know, we're, we're excited to celebrate Hispanic heritage. Um, you know, yes. as, as a company at Aftershoot, we're, obviously quite a diverse brand. So we have people from all around the world. Um, you know, our employees are all, you know, scattered all amongst the world. And we have plenty of Hispanic employees. Um, you know, our ambassador team, we have plenty of Hispanic ambassadors. Um, so we're we're very loud and proud about that. Of course, my lovely wife is also Hispanic. So yeah. it's uh, exciting to be able to, to really have a personal touch to this. Um, and so now with the nitty gritty questions, like, what are the challenges you have faced as a Hispanic, whether it's in this industry or just in general? What what sort of things do you face? Hmm, <laughs> this, this goes way, 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 way deep. But I, I want to say uh, one of the challenges mainly is discrimination uh, because I am Latino and, you know, I feel like sometimes people discriminate against that. Uh, and, you know, there's other things, but you know, that will be for another time. But I would say that, but I would say that that's one of the main things, right? I, I feel like when I was growing up, because when I came from Puerto Rico, I came to America, I didn't know any English, and you know, I used to get discriminated against because of that. Um, so I would say like that's one of the major things that uh, Hispanics, uh, you know, face in the United States for sure. Yeah. Oh, among absolutely. other things. <laughs> yeah, but, among yeah. other things, definitely. But yeah, that's that's one discrimination. It's unfortunately one of those things that uh, that we, you know, even with Veronica, my wife being Hispanic, that we face oftentimes, you know, we, you know, the stories and the things that happen, it's just, you know, and it's not and it's not just it's not just 
out and about, right? Like it, it's all yeah. it's all over the, it's all over the place. But even bringing it back down to the core of the photography industry, it's something that we have faced that she faces personally all the time. Um, yes, and, you know, other, other photographers and other people in the industry, whether they, you know, and sometimes it's it's not uh, it's not something that there that we are looking at and saying like oh you know blowing something out of her fortune it's just the, sometimes it's literally the simple things like oh yeah she's she has an accent so she's stupid right it's like that yeah. those are words that somebody has said before right a photographer in this industry had said that out of their mouth right yeah. not that way they said, oh she's stupid and i'm like yeah actually you don't know how educated she is but uh it's just right sort of, like, <laughs> yeah it's that that prejudgment and those sort of things and and you know it's one of those things that we'd love to see break down over time that hopefully we can change that opinion and, and do those sort of things to to break down these barriers and that that racism or that discrimination, um, whether it's inside or outside of the industry, we hope to be able to be a part of that as a company. Uh, and that's, you know, something that we would love to see. So I have a question that is totally off off track from that is like, what do you think or or what do you vision? And this is a loaded question. Um, what do you think would be the the way that we can help uh, uh, reduce racism? What what sort of concepts or, or things do you think are important to uh, break down these walls? Hmm, that's a really good question. <laughs> but I think I have, I, I, I actually feel like I think that people need to come out of their shell. <laughs> and, you know, I, I understand, like, because, you know, race, racism and discrimination comes from generation, right? Like, it's passed down to their families, to their kids, blah, 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 blah. But I feel like if, you know, if they came, like, if they actually thought, okay, you know what, let me go to this country, you know, let, let me see how they really are. Because I'm only seeing one-sided uh, story, which is, you know, coming down from my family. My family is the one telling me that I should hate these people or I should discriminate against them. Um, I feel like if they took the time or the chance to actually, um, you know, go to that actual country and, and see for themselves how wonderful and how respectful people are, I think that they would have a whole different perspective. Um, I don't think that there is no way of changing somebody who has been, you know, who has grown into, let's say, into this environment. Um, I don't think, you know, they have to see it for themselves. It's something that you see with your eyes. Just like, you know, with photography, you know exactly when that shot is, oh my God, this is the perfect shot. I, I feel like that's also the same scenario here, for sure. I like how you tied that back yeah. to photography. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, that's a great, that's a great answer, but I'm impressed that you managed to squeeze it back to <laughs> photography. That's true. I mean, really, yeah. it's hard to change somebody's opinion about other people when they've been raised or, or brought up in an environment that that's just the, the opinion that they're going to have. Um, but until they actually have the opportunity to connect or learn, uh, you know, firsthand what it means, that's that's huge. And I think that's the importance of Hispanic Heritage yeah. Month um, is really like showing that, you know, you can find people of all different heritages and nationalities uh, that that really are extremely valuable human beings they're amazing human beings and this is our way to kind of celebrate them and bring them to the forefront so um it is really cool to be able to to be a part of that as a company but also just you know being a part of that at latinos who photograph is like a huge way to kind of generate that that feeling and that inspiration especially in this industry because you know this industry is is you know, wrought with some of these things. There's definitely some segments here yeah. that are inclusive in this industry, which leads me to my next question. How do you see the Hispanic community in the photography industry? Ooh, in the photography industry, I feel like it's still lacking, um, but I, I can see that they are making efforts, especially when I went to WPBI this past year. I feel like, you know, it's, it's going to happen. Eventually, they, they're going to open up those doors more for Latino photographers because there's a lot of talent there, too. It's not just in America. We have 
many talented South in, in, in this in South America. We have many talented photographers in Mexico that I've seen in Panama, in Peru. Like it, it's just astonishing that no one has ever discovered them prior um, to me starting Latino to photograph. Yeah, and that's an amazing. I mean, I was just in Argentina um, for Maxi Oviedo's Congress. Which Ooh, is a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a charitable Congress. So every all, you know, they donate to different causes. It's an amazing, amazing thing to be a part of. It's like a family. But I was sitting there watching the speakers, and they're all obviously Hispanic because it's a it's a Latin American based. So all the speakers came from all around South America, Central America. I'm sitting there watching these speakers, and I'm embarrassed. As a photographer, I'm watching and I'm saying, these are some of the most talented photographers I've ever seen. Mm. And I'm over here. <laughs> yeah, this is, you know, but it's it's really, it's, it's just, unfortunately, it's a representation thing. I think that, you know, getting them more represented in this industry, um, we could step up the entire industry and in what we pertain to. I mean, I learned some things. I don't speak Spanish that well. Um, I speak it pretty good, but I learned some things at this conference. <laughs> that yeah you should have heard me I, I had to present on stage to like 600 people in Spanish it was so funny um, but <laughs> oh, I, well, wait, I want to hear you talk in Spanish give me a little okay we'll get well, well, yeah we, we can do some stuff <laughs> um, but yeah no so I like you know just just watching in in my with my limited Spanish I learned so much from some of these photographers and like you know these family photographers they're doing this fine art portraiture that you know, in the United States, we'd be charging thousands of dollars for and they're, you know, obviously there's different economies and they're just like kind of run of the mill photographers. Like you could point at 12 people and they're all doing this amazing, uh, like unbelievable work. Mm. And they're just like average, right? And, 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 these, yeah. and, and they just don't have that representation. They haven't been brought to the forefront. Um, so definitely it's exciting to see that there's something like Latinos who photograph who can help uplift them in this industry and, and set that standard and be more inclusive. Um, you know, cause I'm sure my Absolutely. next question you're, you're going to hear right about how that needs to happen, which is like, do you feel that brands support Hispanic photographers? Hmm. I want to say yes and no, uh, <laughs> which is like, because I don't feel like we are yet in that position where we're still we still have that presence where, you know, they're giving a lot of opportunities to a Latino photographer. Um, I do. I want to say yes in the aspect of that. Yes, there are some colleagues that I've seen that they have done amazing things, and they're Latino photographers, but they don't really represent or um, I, I would say they there's not enough of them <laughs> yet. So I think yeah. that eventually it's, it's going to change. Um, once, you know, you know, the world changes their ways. So, yeah, I, yeah, but right I, now, I, I don't feel it's there yet. I think, I think as, as we grow as an industry, as people, we start getting more acceptance and, and understanding. I mean, I have that firsthand, you know, with my wife being Peruvian, I already am way more open to any of that concept. And I'll tell you, all of my favorite photographers minus maybe one are all Hispanic. Uh, many of them are in Colombia, they're in Argentina and their, their work just is, uh, you know, in Mexico, like Barbara Torres is, is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, I Cristina. love her. Like, yeah. Their work is just so inspiring and beautiful. And I wish I could be as good as them. Right. Like that's that kind of <laughs> that, that concept that, you know, again, being able to expand your, your palette and, and, be more willing to understand and being more inclusive, you can definitely pick up on these things. It's one of the reasons why when we went out and set to build these ambassador teams, we focused on personality, we focused on, on work. Um, and, and what that ended up bringing us was people like Barbara and, and Christian, because their work is beyond anything that I can physically do, right? I can look mm. at their work and say, what happened? to me to make me so bad right but like that's that's because they're so amazing but it's it's my predisposition allows me to be more open to it and that's again that thing where we can say yeah like that's a an amazing ambassador because they're works for themselves and they're so talented and they deserve every bit of it so um it's it's cool to have that as as part of our representation so what do you think um is the biggest contribution of the Hispanic community to the world? 
Okay, so this question, I, <laughs> it was a very hard question, to be honest. But I want to say that, like, um, I want to say the contribution as for myself, because I, I can't really answer that question in the world, per se. But I, I would say, like, for me as, uh, as a Latino photographer, um, you know, we have I don't, a lot of Latino a lot of Latino people have like the spicy spirit to themselves, right? And and you know, yes, food, comida. Yes, so somebody just said, <laughs> and just said food, comida. Yes, absolutely. So I feel like uh, as a photographer, like when I'm on set, um, I basically you know have like um, I have to kind of like role play with the with the actress or the model, whoever, and tell her this is how I want you to act. You know, I want you to do this, and I want you to act like this. And basically, you know, I just go all crazy, and <laughs> sometimes they look at me like, "What the heck?" But it works, right? Uh, it's just like that free spirit, that free Latino, that spiciness to myself. I feel like I'm that person who's contributing, um, you know, in the Hispanic community, in my work at least. So, I, but yes, co contributing to the biggest part of the world, people who know how to cook. I know how to cook. I just haven't cooked in a long time, but I love food. <laughs> food is a big one. I mean, like that's, I, I wouldn't minimalize it to that for sure. But food for me, like yeah, that's many of the, <laughs> many of the, of the Hispanic food is like uh, top notch. Uh, yes. Don't, don't, you know, Veronica will tell you. Peru I would say always, Veronica probably knows how to cook some really good Latino food. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> some good ceviche. Mm, I have to go over. 100%. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's cool. That's a very diplomatic answer for us trying to ask you uh, to represent all Hispanics in the entire world. So I appreciate I appreciate that. That's yes, a, yes, absolutely. That's a solid answer on that one. That that question <laughs> that was a trick question. That was to see if you would come out and say Pedro Vasquez is the most important thing to the Hispanic. <laughs> oh my God! I would no, I would never do that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. And yeah, so uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the things that I, per uh, Ben has a great comment here, like mine's pretty much were math wizards and other citizens, like seriously, one of the things that I always bring up is the Incas. Some of the mm. things that the, that the Incan culture brought to the world that we would never know, like, like corn didn't exist. Corn is gen genetically modified food. Like the Incas were known for genetically modifying plants so corn didn't exist until the Incas existed. They genetically what? modified wheat to make corn. Yeah. So like oh, definitely, wow. yeah. They So in Peru, they have like, which is the heartland of the Incas, they have all of the varieties of potatoes. Like they, and they were all adapted or most of them were adapted and, and crossbred potato plants and different plants to do them. So they were like agricultural experts, which is like absolutely in, insane. Yeah, Ben, corn, corn should be blue. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I know. Peru has purple corn, it has the big white corns, it has all of the corn, mm. but it's because they were experimenting with plants and how to genetically modify plants, which is absolutely insane. So, yeah, like, to, to narrow it down to anything is impossible, other than saying, yes, Pedro is absolutely amazing. Um, he's probably <laughs> the greatest in Hispanic culture. <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't, but, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, cool. So We'll start dialing back in here. Like, what's next for Latinos who photograph? Mm, so what's next for Latinos who photograph? Um, we want to become a nonprofit organization. Um, and we want to be able to support photographers and videographers through their different um, creative journeys. Um, we want to offer them with guidance and, you know, education um, in some type of way. So we're working on that. Um, and, you know, hopefully... That is, we're creating a web, well, you know, we had a website this whole entire time, but we're working on it so we can actually highlight those things that we were talking about. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> I don't want to say too much because I, you yeah. know, because I really, you know, because it's still, it's, it's still a learning process. Uh, you know, it's something that, yes, it started. So Latinos Who Photograph um, was created in 2021. And this is the very beginning of January. My idea 
was a different idea that turned into a different idea that turned into a different idea that turned into a different idea. It has been turning into a lot of different ideas. But I think we've gotten it now to the point where we understand what we're supposed to do. Um, you know, because there's a lot of people that have ideas, right? But then once you stick to one thing, I, I think that that's the most important thing. So I think that's what we're going to be highlighting on our social media, if you know, coming soon. So 2024, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's that's such great news. And then more importantly, um, which Halloween costume should I? No, I'm just kidding. What's no? What's <laughs> next for Pe what's next for Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. Um, so, so for me, so I currently, so I moved to Florida, and I currently own a photography studio here in Orlando, um, and basically. Um, you know, I've been working with different brands here locally. Well, not locally, but I got, you know, some brands here with me. And <clears throat> I want to basically partner and try to see if eventually I make this into a production company. So that's kind of like where I'm headed in, the, in that direction. Because I already know how to do everything. And now I just need to make it into a production company where we can help other brands, you know, get their advertising, get their photos, get their whole thing. So that's where I'm headed. That's, <laughs> Hopefully. That's <very> cool. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's absolutely amazing. Oh, I definitely messed up that post. So I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to, trying to share, share some links here um, so that everyone can kind of dive in and, and, and find you. Um, so essentially, Pedro, you're an amazing product photographer, right? I, mean, I wouldn't like, say that uh, yet. <laughs> I'm still learning. <laughs> you're no, you're you're uh, you're absolutely like uh, if you if you haven't seen his work, everyone, I'm going to post a link. Um, it's P Daz Photography, um, but really, like your your work is is incredible. Thank you. Actually, I don't have everything up there, uh, but thank you. I appreciate you. I, I feel like uh, I feel like my work has changed so much, uh, and now I'm afraid to like even post anything because I don't even know where to start. Uh, but yeah, I I appreciate that. I, I will. Yeah, I will take that. Yeah, up, sure. update some of that work. I mean, if you want to see more of his uh, full concept planning, you could just head to the to the Shapewear, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, that's you can you could go. Yeah, you could go to shapelex.com. Um, you can see all my pictures there or poppylush.com. So yeah, that's 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 absolutely amazing. But yeah, your work is it's just stunning. It's well done. It's beautiful. Um, Thank you. You know, we're, we're we're so lucky to have had you here. Um, and we really, we really appreciate all of the time and energy that you've taken towards, you know, helping uplift the, the Latin community uh, amongst the industry. And as always, after shoots, uh, excited to be along for the ride and, and help any way we can. So um, thank you for taking the time. And, uh, and yeah, thank we'll, you, we'll Justin. And we'll, we'll have to sidebar. I mean, really, like, we'll have to do something in the future. Uh, around product photography too, because that, that that part of the story is so inspiring as well. So, thank you. Yes, um, and thank you, thank you so much, Justin, for having me. I mean, and for obviously, you know, making this very comfortable. Because to be honest, I love being behind. I, so, just really quickly here, when I was younger, I used to love being in front of the camera. I, I think that's where my creative juices really come from. You know, it's like I always wanted to be in front of the camera, but now. I just want to go hide. <laughs> like, I don't want to be in front of the camera anymore. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's like this, there is like that fear, like, you know what I'm saying, that you get just from looking into the camera because you know that you can see everything. And especially when you're behind the camera, you see everything, you know everything. So it's kind of, I don't know. It's like a anxiety factor thing that's been kicking in <laughs> you, for me. You, you crushed it. Yeah, I even thank you. you. I even asked you some questions that you you probably shouldn't have even been answering, and you you nailed it like a diplomat. It was fantastic. <laughs> of course, I mean you got to be prepared. You know, I think that's, uh, and I mean, and and I think it's also good to 
tell people the truth on how you what you feel, whatever that question is. I don't think anybody should sugarcoat anything. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a very honest person when it comes to that. And I will tell you, hey, I don't, if I don't like this, I'm going to rat you out and I'm going to tell you right on the spot. Don't like that video. <laughs> but yeah. Thank That's you, awesome. Justin. I appreciate you. No, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you everybody that joined. Everyone, be sure to uh, go go follow Latinos Who Photograph to find some amazing photographers and find an amazing uh, movement to help uplift Latinos in the industry. And then be sure to go follow uh, Pedro on his personal account because absolutely exciting, amazing work there. Um, it's always, and he's going to, he promised right now live on air that he's going to start posting more so that you can see some more stuff. Um, yeah. and uh, <laughs> thank you so much for, for joining us and celebrating Hispanic heritage with us all. So we're, we're very excited to have it. Justin, before we leave, can we yeah. leave by, uh, saying Latinos will go photograph really loud? Yeah. Uh, just the two of us. You got it. Yes. The two of us. Come on. Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. You count it down. All right, guys. One, two, three. If you're at home, please yell. Latinos, Latinos who photograph. Who photograph. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank love you so it. much. Thank you, Justin. I love you guys. Take care. Have Thank a good day. You. Happy Bye Friday. All. Peace.